Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today I'm going to be playing Mask of the Rose, the new visual novel by Fail Better Games, who are the minds behind the Fallen London games, like uh, Fallen London, for one, um, Sunless Sea and Sunless Skies, which are among some of the most recommended games I get to the channel, and I promise I will get to them one day. Um, but this is a new game out on the 8th of June, it's now the day, the next day because of the time it came out in the UK, it didn't give me enough time to upload on the first day. But it has given me time to look at some of the Steam reviews that are coming in, and it's fair to say it's had a bit of a mixed reception. Uh, most of which seems to go around uh, the length of the game, and how restrictive that is, and the choices you're given. It's, it's only supposed to last about three to four hours, I think, and a lot of people are saying they haven't got the time, or the ability to play through all the threads. I think it's the sort of game that's uh, maybe designed around replaying it, and trying to see all the different threads in different playthroughs. Um, so I guess my intention is probably to be a bit more focused about what I do. Uh, maybe play through it twice on the channel. Um, and just see how the different playthroughs play out. So without further ado, let's get started on our first playthrough. Your first foray into Mask of the Rose is unlikely to end as happily as you might hope. Never mind. Savor your successes. Delight in your disasters. Try again, wiser in the ways of the Neath. And it went before I could finish that thought. In February 1862, with no warning at all, London fell through the surface of the earth. This was meant to be a year of progress and industry, the Great Exposition, trams, a new sewer system. Instead, we find ourselves dwelling in a cave. It's October now, the fires have been put out, the bodies have been buried. But the future remains unimaginable, the time before impossibly distant. Now we get to say who we are, and I, for the first time through I'm going to go... Oh hang on, no, we only had, in the demo I only had two options, so let's have a little look at this. We could be a dock worker's child, uh, my father worked the docks unloading ships, my uncle was a sailor. We were on the right side of the law, but the same couldn't always be said for our friends. The docks are allied with the working class and criminals. A child of the gentry. My family had an estate on the surface. My father was a magistrate. All that is unreachable now, of course. I had the bad fortune to be in London during the fall, and now there is no going back. But I do have a few connections here. The landed gentry hobnob in high society and with the constabulary. Hmm. A tailor. My family kept a tailoring shop with aspirations. We dressed our customers better than we dressed ourselves. Shopkeepers have contacts with society, but their own origins are more humble. They may also have some contacts among the artistically inclined. So this is a housebreaker's child, but we have to complete the game in order to unlock it for future playthroughs. We won't read that now, because we might do it later. Same for an undertaker, an arcane academic. This is what I played in the demo that I put out on the channel a month or so ago. So these are, these are sort of the three starting ones, and for the playthrough I've got in mind, I might go Child of the Gentry. That's me. Down here, your name is whatever you say it is. Often there's no one left to remember who you used to be. Some people hold tight to the names they carried before. Some reinvent themselves completely. I prefer strangers to address me as... I'm going to be male. Um, I want to be Professor. I'm going to be Fresser, um, though my friends call me, I'm going to be Professor Flirty for this first playthrough, and we're going to be a flirty playthrough. We're going to flirt with everyone. That's me. Flirty to my friends, Professor to strangers. Uh, down here I'm finally able to use the name that always fit me. Um, Professor Flirty. Well, I think we need. I think this was my uh, silhouette in the demo that I did. So let's be slightly different. But Professor Flirty. Um, I think we might. This uh, this feels good. Professor Flirty. There we go. In the Neath, a true ally means everything. When I find people to be close to, I am open to. Well, we're we're going to be open to everything. Uh, so you, well, you can choose friendship, but no romantic or physical intimacy. Friendship and physical in intimacy, but no romance. No romance. Friendship and romance, but no physical intimacy. Oh, I'm going to be any way, baby. <laughs> I 
We're looking for connections. Here we, well, yeah, she says, I'll be looking for both romantic feelings and a physical connection. Friendship and matchmaking are possible too, of course. So we are Professor Flirty, a child of the gentry. Heart's desire, passionate romance. Let's go with this. Right now, I'm meant to be helping with the census, finding out who still lives in my neighborhood. The first census results are due tomorrow. If I turn them in, I get paid the first money to come my way in nearly two months. If I don't, I'm going to disappoint Grizz badly. She knew I was in trouble, so she went out of her way to find me work with her own employers. She even gave me a badge to show my affiliation. New item acquired. Badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. In front of the badge... But sorry, the front of the badge looks almost like a constable's badge, with the lion and unicorn blazoned on it. The back of the badge has some kind of symbol I don't recognise. Hot to the touch. Mm. I keep it with the clothes I have from before the fall, and a few odd items I found more recently. Uh, change my outfit. I guess we can put on the... Okay, torso. I'm going to put on my elegant cloak. And we will... Have... Oh, what's this? Fake but vibrant corsage. The most obvious thing about this flower is that it is extremely fake. Perfect for going out on the town, boasting and gallivanting. Uh, well, we've just read this. Let's take the, the official batch then. I'm assuming there's nothing in these slots because there was no exclamation mark. That'll do. Ah, I thought you were up here. She glances at the badge I'm wearing. I suppose I should be glad you're thinking about the census, even if you didn't get around to leaving the house. I react to that I re the way I react to many things these days. <laughs> um, I turn into a joke. I thought I'd wait for a change in the weather. A lovely snow, perhaps. There's no sunshine down here. There are no yellow pea soup fogs. There's no rain, except an occasionally a fine mist. Londoners lost half our topics of conversation when we fell. Come tomorrow evening, we need to have at least a few census forms filled out. Or I'm going to be the one explaining to Mr. Pages. And if that happens, I'm not going to help you with your employment prospects again. Grizz works for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. It seems to agree with her. She wears trousers to work and comes home at all hours. It's very important to her, being taken seriously by these employers. The next thing I do is characteristic, too. Um, well, we're, Doctor F we're Professor Flirty, so let's just go down the compliment jokey flirting route. I wouldn't worry. You said the Ministry are working in a reclaimed solicitor's office? They could only compare you to a bunch of legal clerks. You must be look a model of efficiency. Grizz's employers are unusual. She says she's never seen their faces. I think they've met a lot of unusual people. What do you think of the questions? They're written in the most peculiar spiked handwriting, and there are punctures in the paper, in random spots. Tease her as though I think that's her handwriting. Is that your handwriting, Grizz? What an extraordinary style. My governess used to say that if penmanship ought to be bold, fire free and elegant, I'd only got as far as lesson one. But that is not a sample of my own work. My employers wrote out the list themselves. The ministry is short of clerks. Here, try the questions on me. Say you've just knocked on the door and I have come to answer it. Yes, what do you want? Uh, introduce myself as an agent of the ministry showing my badge. So I think this option is enabled because we're wearing the badge. Uh, that's what I'm taking this symbol to mean anyway. I trust you're well this evening. On behalf of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting, I have a few questions. Oh, how lovely. I'm so grateful these ministries are looking after us. Yeah, I'm sure that's their reaction. Uh... Flirtatiously riff. We're going to go every flirtation option in this run. Flirtatiously riff on how excellent the Ministry is. The Ministry is extraordinary now you mention it. All its servants are uncommonly clever and attractive. Oh, you have not met some of my colleagues. 
uh, jokingly speculate. You said the masters wear robes and hoods and that you haven't seen their faces. Perhaps they are too radiantly beautiful for anyone to look at. I've wondered. They're magnetic in a way. How many people live in this establishment? Is that a... Oh, sorry. How many people live in this establishmentation? Is that a word? Establishmentation? My superiors are enthusiastic embellishers of the language. If you like, you can... Uh, Mm -hmm. Translate I into questions that are more likely to be understood. Right. How many people live in this establishment? Four. The landlady, Miss Horatia Chapman, a young man named Archibald Reed, myself, and a fourth character, very disreputable. Laugh as she clearly intends. I laugh, a real laugh. I'm sure our neighbours' households are very well regulated. Sometimes I'm in the mood to keep chatting, and sometimes I want to get to the point. Uh, linger over the census in order to keep chatting with Grizz. Is anyone in this establishment enamorificated or impassionated? Uh, what does this even mean? Uh, they're asking here if anyone here is in love. Just ask that. Is anyone here in love? No. Teaser. If you wanted to discuss our romantic inclinations, Grizz, there are easier ways. You didn't have to ask me to survey all our neighbours on the topic. No? At this moment, of course, Archie has to turn up. Archie is a medical student. He hadn't finished his training before the fall, but he has plenty of work now. Right after the fall, it was broken bones and cuts. Lately, there are fewer wounds and more diseases. Hey, I wondered where you were. Uh, well, we're gonna greet Archie flirtatiously, of course. Hello there, Archie. Uh, couldn't wait to see him as me at supper, then. Aye, that wouldn't be why I'm here, I'm afraid. Grizz laughs. Out I went this morning to visit a patient, and what do I find pasted up on the wall? He holds up a broadsheet. There's a new decree from the, from the Ministry of Cartography and Chiro uh, Chirography that all maps and atlases are to be surrendered or put on the fire. Is your folk making these rules, Grizz? Uh, I'm going to stay out of it. I have no view. Will you be asking your Mr. Pages about these maps? One must respect the law. None of us knows what is safe down here in the Neath. Most likely there are reasons you can't imagine. Flirty, <laughs> please do collect at least a few census forms by tomorrow from whatever Londoners you are able to find. At the end of the day, I'll find you and we can take them to Mr. Pages together. New goal, deliver a filled census form to Pages. She gives me a long look before she goes. Nay, hey, well, next time I'll not come in without knocking. Might be I'll cough a few times so the two of you can separate. Uh, let's ask Archie whether he's jealous. Is that jealousy speaking, Archie? Ach, no. Do you feature me making up to Lady Griselda? I'd be in fear for my life. Um... Check on how he's feeling. How are you feeling? Is the cave oppressing you too much? Hey, worse than Grizz, I will not lay. Seems there's no road out here. Food from the masters is a wee reprieve, but what do you think of all else that might kill us below? Scurvy and the like. A great hulk in the rock fell on a house in Southwark. Did the roof... Did the roof in a near to kill the whole household? But I'd best be quiet. I'd like to give you nightmares too. I'm fair out a lot on them to help with the sleep. Uh, let's talk about the census. Grizz has me gathering census pages for the ministry. Hey, Grizz told me it was some such thing. <laughs> okay. Simply ask about his romantic commitments. Respond with protective kindness or maintain it in a warmth. Well, this is to do with the clothes we're wearing, so let's try this one. Ah, oh, there's nothing for you to worry about. Uh, are you in love with anyone, or promised to anyone, perhaps, from before the fall? 
I wouldn't say it's gone quite that far. You can write down that I enjoy someone's company, if you want to tell your employers such a thing. What about before the cataclysm? Eh, there was a lass back home, and what did my mother do but promise me to her? Uh, suggest he might prefer a more local alternative, hmm? That sounds like a long way to go to be finding a bride. Might be there's someone better suited here in London. Eh, well, I never had much nerve for a cotton. Maybe no one down here would take a fancy to me, anyhow. The question has stirred recollections he's not considered for a time. As it bad to say, I've not thought of her since much. She has very even teeth. My mother said all overlapping teeth in a woman meant defiance, and gaps mean a light skirt. A light skirt? Hmm, not come across that phrase before. I'll laugh. <laughs> There's stranger theories I heard in the medical lecture hall. And plenty of constables who thought we'd catch the criminals that road. Uh, we're going to flirt with Archie, obviously. I allow myself to engage in a spot of mm -hmm, innuendo. He gives me a funny lopsided look, like it's just occurred to him that something could ever go well in his life. Oh, that's a bit sad. If I'd met the likes of you in Scotland, I might never have come to London. Um... Uh, the thing is, I don't know if we get locked in. Um, let's encourage Archie. So you're wishing you'd met a copy of me instead of myself? I'm devastated. Och, you take the words away from me and wrestle them to me and something else. You know well enough what I'm saying. Why are we, why are we all blurring out? Are we fainting? I keep track of everything in my journal. What conversations I've had, the plans I've made, how I'm feeling about other people. Alright, review the day. How do we do? Status, 259 days since the fall, the season of confessions. We've made zero pennies, we've filled out a census page, and it is evening time. Uh, conduct more in census interviews if there is time, and wait for Grizz to take me to see Mr. Pages. Acquaintances. Mean, Professor Flirty, occupation, not a jot old bean. Household, Chapman's Boarding House, Thrall Street. Romantic interests, passionate romance. Uh -huh. uh, my views on life in the Neath are still forming. History, day minus 124, pre-fall, I moved into Chapman's. Day 40, chaos, began to use my true name, Professor Flirty. Day 220, confessions, ask Grizz to help me find work. Okay, Archie, Archibald Reed, we don't know his job. Well, didn't we not say he's a doctor? Pause with Horatia. Uh, his mum has a nice girl for him back home. Our relationship simmers pleasantly. Perhaps it could become something more, but he once implied we don't get along well enough. Oh. Day minus one, pre-fall. I've known Archie since shortly before the fall. Day 259. Archie joked about my feelings for Grizz. I finished taking the census with him, and things are heating up between me and Archie. Hmm. Grizz. Uh, Griselda Smith, clerk at the ministry. Boards with Horatia. We don't know about her romantic interests. Our relationship simmers pleasantly. Perhaps it could become something more. Day minus 15. Pre-fall. Grizz moved into Chapman's a short while before the fall. She wore gowns back then. Day 259, which is today, remember. Grizz came to ask about my progress on the census. I've made no progress. Harjit. Harjit Singh Constable. Um, okay, we've no we haven't met him yet in the game. The one I ask whenever I get lost, or, I th or think I might be going to get lost. Day zero. Mid-apocalypse. I first remember Harjit from the night of the fall when he was patrolling the neighbourhood. Horatia, this is our um, landlady. Keeps Chapman's and all its lodgers. I still owe her back rent. Okay, I moved into Horatia, she gave me a good room and a stern speech about conduct in her house. Uh, Mid-apocalypse, we lived through the night of the fall in Horatia's basement. She's looked after all her lodgers since. Uh, Okay, so this is basically every conversation that we've had in the log. That's fine. Okay, I think we've got a grasp of, the, grasp of that. Six days remain in the season of confessions. The newspapers aren't what they used to be, but someone is still printing broadsheets these days. Archie brought, uh, bought one, and the headlines read... River through London, no longer to be known by its former name. 
Londoners warned of strange creatures emerging from waters. Ooh. So I should also point out for those that are familiar with the Fail Better games that this is obviously in the same universe as everything else, Fallen London and the Sunless games. Uh, relive the Fall of London will not cause time to pass. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Because I, as I said before, I, ha I haven't played those prior games. I'm always reliving London's last night on the surface. I try to put it out of my head, but it's still there. The dimming of the sun at three in the afternoon. The sky turning the colour of rust. The horrible bang and the cloud of dust from the direction of Westminster. The tolling of the bells. The horsemen who rode down the street, liveried in the garb of the palace, shouting, In Her Majesty's name, go indoors! And then the sky was full of bats. These are probably bats rather than birds, right? More bats than I thought could exist in the world. Wheeling, shrieking, defecating. People went indoors then, if they'd ignored the criers. Those that had no house crowded into the churches and under the bridges. Even now I don't understand. Uh, how Her Majesty knew to send criers? Because that would have taken a bit of time to organise, right? The palace has been shuttered since that day. The royal family do not emerge. Surely if they had known this was coming, they would have departed London. It was the only city that fell. The rest of the England, we assume, remains above. Hmm. Archie. I reckon it's a tornado. I heard of something similar in the Welsh hills back to 1760. Nay light in the sky and a noise like a thunderclap. That's no tornado, love. It's a plague of Egypt. Uh, I let them talk. I've seen tornadoes. They come and then they move right on again and they aren't made of bats. They say the tornadoes scatter livestock every which way. Sheep on the rooftops and that. Then the ground shook again. I believe we can blame Mr. Basil Getz excavations, digging about under London, causing a seismic disturbance. And what did he find doing there about a cave of three million bats? Is that what you reckon? There are stranger things beneath London. That was the beginning of it. But we were down there for hours and hours. The sky darkened and it didn't return to normal. Once, around midnight, Grizz went upstairs and opened the door to the street. But she came right back down again. She said the cobbles were galloping about. It wasn't safe to walk outside. After that first bit, the memories collide and get confused. I have trouble keeping track of which came first and which came later, and whether I'm imagining something. I spent a lot of days like this, thinking back, trying to piece together the bits of the puzzle. As if I could realise something that would make sense of it all. Um, we haven't... A well, we'll have a look at it. As far as I know, we haven't acquired a new outfit, have we? No, so I'm, I'm quite happy to keep wearing what I'm wearing, to be honest. Uh, let's venture out into London. In. So people are saying one of the issues is that you, you get two actions per day. So we've had our morning action. This looks like it's going to go into our evening action. Um, and there's only 16... The game only runs for 16 days. That's 32 actions total, which doesn't sound like a lot, does it? There sounds like there's going to be a lot happening. Uh, we can't scroll them out, so this is everything. So we've got the boarding house and Thrall Street. Let's go do that. Just outside my front door. Surely these are the same streets that were always here? I'm going to take the census with hard yet. This is different to the demo as well. We went to speak to um, a shopkeeper before. It's worth it to be mindful of how others will perceive me. What role I play, what I can and cannot say, it is constrained by my clothes. This was true before the fall, but it's even truer now. Names, identities, and relationships have all become so unsteady and, uh, and unreliable. Harjit admires duty, but do doesn't always care for the ministry. It's hard to say what impression the badge makes on him. 
Alright, well, let's change. Let's put our little um, corsage back on them. That'll do. Uh, satisfied. The streets outside Mrs. Chapman's are not easy. I have friends and friends of friends in the best neighbourhoods in London. The Landau's townhouse. A well-appointed townhouse suffused with a homely glow from its tall windows, home of the Landau siblings. But whenever I need to find more of them, it's Harjit who helps me. I have something for you if you want it. He produces a nearly new Admiral's hat in perfectly good condition. I found it near the docks. No sign of the owner, and I can't wear it myself. I thought someone at Mrs. Chapman's might get some use out of it. Perhaps Lady Griselda. Admiral's hat, trimmed with gold braid. It makes a person look a respectable representative of the Navy. Wearing it gives me a commanding, if slightly curmudgeonly, appearance. Hmm. Clothes make an impression on, on other people when I wear them. They make an impression on me, too. Sometimes I'm inspired to say things I wouldn't otherwise. I have the feeling this particular hat would make me a bit gruff and commanding. Oh, well, I don't want to lose the lapel flower. Let's put the hat on. I don't want to be dramatically ungrateful. I'll just thank him profusely. Much appreciated. What a thoughtful gift. It's so cold down here and clothes wear out quickly. Harjit laughs. Explain that I'm work... Hmm. Explain that I'm working for the Ministry on... Let's just say I have questions. I had a few inquiries I wished to make. Harjit looks unsatisfied by that explanation. They're not very difficult questions. Harjit looks out of sorts. London was determined to London was determined to collect everyone's name even before the fall. Oh, that's him. London was determined to collect everyone's name even before the fall. Uh Say the information is needed for planning. The idea is to find out how many mouths need feeding. A list like that is never put to only one use. But never mind, you do not have to explain yourself to me. Not while I'm wearing this uniform, at any rate. What do you wish to know? Use the question as a chance to flirt. <laughs> Is there anyone living with you at the moment? Hmm? I'm trusting you. Don't betray it. At one time, I shared my lodgings. That was prior to the fall, but my former companion is missing. Heat things up further. Is there anyone special in your life, Harjit? You choose an odd time and place for your advances. Dem <laughs> Demand, he tell me. Invent a fabulous tale of my reliability in all matters. Prior to February, I was a confidential agent for the royal family. Oh? You may trust my discretion absolutely. This is not a matter I would explain to most people. You and I have known one another for some time, however. I think you would hear me out kindly, but if you would rather not carry my secrets. Assure Harjit I will keep his confidence, whatever it is. I believe I know what is expected in these situations. Even before the fall, I would not have married. My companion was not a lady. He was an officer who came to the Punjab. We became acquainted, and then more than acquainted. I thought he and I would remain together throughout our lives. I followed him here, away from my own country, and everything I knew, to the home of my former enemies. He promised me that it was worth the sacrifice, he said we would never be separated. You will observe that he isn't here. Sympathize. My sincere sympathy, I can only imagine how it must feel. Harjit makes a few flattering remarks on my better points. 
I have been looking for him since the night of the fall. I walked on streets that were tearing themselves stone from stone looking for him. Um, suggest he may still be found. Maybe we can find him. Perhaps you'll still find him. It becomes more unlikely. Silence falls. I look for Lucian everywhere I go. Wipe tears from my own eyes. The gesture is discreet but does not go unnoticed. Harjit holds out a tiny photograph, the sort that might be given to a mother or sweetheart when a man goes to war. The sitter has tremendous sideburns and moustaches, both luxuriant and curly. Definite brows, a broad forehead of the kind usually associated with intellect. And a sensitivity around the eyes, suggesting someone at once dashing and prone to long consideration. Tell him truthfully that I recognise the photo. Maybe we do. I've seen him sometime. I don't remember where. I saw him in the sunlight, though. So it must have been before the fall. If you remember anything more, or if you see him, please tell me. Help Harjit find his lost beloved. Cool. Be prickly and hide my attraction to Harjit. Um, how is the neighbourhood doing? All well on the streets? Every day I can walk a little further without getting lost, but sometimes I lose a place again. Do you recall the second-hand clothes man who used to be around the corner? Uh... Yes? At first I thought the shop was destroyed, but it's moved two streets away now, the whole building. Uh... I don't want to suggest he dreamed it. How is that possible? How could that be? The stars don't stay put in the sky. Perhaps the streets are also free to roam. I should be on my way. I have already been here too long. You make me forget where I should be. Oh, I can manage just one more errand today before supper. Got two census pages, that's pretty cool. What's going on with our outfit now? We've got this. We've got this hat on. That makes us grumpy. I don't know if I want to be grumpy with people. That's not really my, my thing. Oh, we we'll slightly. We'll be slightly more of a dandy with the the flower. I think. Okay. So the way this is where we are. That's where we were. We can go to the Landales townhouse. Oh. How do I, how do I go there? Um, I will, I'm fine. It's nice that, the, it's nice the game checks. But I haven't got a lot of choices. Good afternoon. Uh, explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. I don't have my badge with me, but I'm collecting census information for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. The lady looks faintly mutinous. I'll see whether my master and mistress are at home. Um. I don't know if I want to lie. Now, let's just be friendly. Delighted to meet you. You must permit me to introduce myself. Flirty. Though you might not want to take my word for it. Not long ago, I met someone who introduced himself as the Marquis of Prickfinger Waste. David and Re Rachel Landau. Rachel is my sister. What can we do for you? Uh, explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. I don't have my badge with me, but I'm collecting cent... Oh, we've just said that already. I see... I'll answer your questions, Flirty, if you answer mine. Call it character research. Are you having peculiar dreams down here? Uh, talk up the lurid misery of my nightmares. <laughs> In truth, my nightmares have become so extreme that I barely dare to sleep. When I close my eyes, I sense the dreadful, malevolent presence. Ah, I asked for your feelings, not for a recitation of your favourite Christmas ghost story. That was only the answer to a question. 
trust me, I interrupted just before we reached the dreadful clanking of the ominous chains. Or perhaps the lidless stare of serpent eyes. I had forgotten till now, but I have dreamed of a snake that watched me in my sleep, while all my limbs were heavy and too paralysed to move. I try to remember what it means, but the thought is gone again. Go ahead with your questions, Flirty. Uh, ask what she means about character research. What did you mean when you said you had a question about character research? I write novels. They're published one chapter at a time in the Lily of London magazine. I was in the midst of one when the fall happened. My publisher insisted that I continue the story despite all. Rachel, are you certain you want to share so much? Does it matter? Surely those precautions are behind us. Ask, ask her what her story's about. What are you writing about? If you take the Lily of London, Flirty, you may have the pleasure of reading my next chapter yourself. Though I confess I'm at a standstill as to what it will contain. My heroine was meant to set off for Paris and there to be reunited with her lost beloved. But as the fall has transpired in fiction as well as in fact, I must resign myself that the courtship is ruined. Uh, make a great show of sympathy. Oh no, oh dear, that's much too bad. Very much too bad. Um, let's take a census information about David. Maintain the tone of warmth. My own household has dwindled a bit since the fall. Is yours as it was? Uh, who lives with you? Our home contains myself, my brother, and our housekeeper. It isn't a grand establishment. We had another housekeeper for many years, but she passed away, and Phoebe, our servant, had lost her place with a neighbour of ours. Ask whether David has any romantic commitments currently. Sorry, I saw there was a flirty answer. I, I forgot to do that one. He doesn't have any commitments. In fact, I would go so far as to say he is utterly without prospects. He stays at home and reads. I haven't been well. He warns me of spinsterhood, but he's headed very much in that direction himself. It isn't the same thing at all. I agree. It isn't. I have my work to support myself. But what's become of your fun since the fall? I'll have to marry if you don't mean to end your days as a pauper, brother. I'll rely on you to support me in my failing years, sister. Uh, use the qu here we go. Use the question as a chance to flirt. Are you married or otherwise promised? Oh, not recently. I was in love once, or so I imagined. Charlotte Cunningham. Oh, sorry, Carringham. She and David had an un understanding. Booty calls. Oh, she converted in any case. Becoming Christian suited her social aspirations. Rachel. Yes, yes, I take leave to dislike your unworthy suitors as heartily as you dislike mine. Milton is a yellow-eyed, flash-dressed, hot-handed creature at least two decades too old for my sister. Rumours of devils are frequent in the city. Maybe Milton is one of them. I hardly think he and Charlotte are comparable. Um, hint for more information about Rachel's unsuitable friend. Oh dear, the rules of polite society have broken somewhat in the fall, haven't they? Nothing of the sort. He's a devil, or rather he belongs to the group using that name. Milton is an artistic inspiration. If you're not a writer yourself, Flirty, you can't guess how much the fall has disrupted our sort of work. Characters have certain tastes, certain preferences, certain prejudices. All I need to do is imagine them in new circumstances and their reactions write themselves. But now, we've all been at least a little bit cracked by the fall. How does anyone behave? Who can say? You always said you wrote from observation. You can still observe. Since the fall, there's no pattern in what I see. It's only home that makes sense to me, and I cannot make my whole novel about a brother and a sister lighting candles at Shabbat. Uh, ask why not to make it a compliment. Why not? I imagine you can make that as fascinating as anything else. Oh, 
Well, my publisher wouldn't tolerate it. The Lily of London wouldn't print it. The rest of the world must come into it somehow. Milton helps me sort the rest of the world. He can make sense of anything, even a vice viscountess running down the street in her peignoir. Yeah, it's easy to understand a misbehaving viscountess. Everything else is stranger. Let me say, flirty, Milton smokes rose-scented cigars. He helps me. Encourage David for further gossip. Goodness, really? Milton quotes poetry instead of making conversation. What does that signify? Milton carries in his breast pocket a jar of honey with a tiny spoon. Plenty of men fashion plenty of men of fashion behave that way. I turned my senses curiosity on Rachel. Use the question as a chance to flirt. Are you married or otherwise promised? Are you in love? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Milton is only a friend. Just as well, too. In the times before, you would never have darkened the door of such a person. Turn the subject to his life and business. With a ready listener, David talks about the life he had before the fall and hopes to have again. There was a steady business which presented him with challenges in which his caution and tendency to doubt were an asset. In his stories, his partners and relatives are sometimes swindled or tricked, but David himself rarely falls prey to that kind of misadventure. His arrangements appear to have been quietly successful, and I have the impression that his friends thought highly of his good sense. We're expected elsewhere. Everything is always running too slowly, and yet every day is the same. You've set loose one or two ideas, for which I certainly owe you something. Oh, I had something I meant to give you. It's silly, a tiny thing really, but convenient, I find. Do you know the way to Hogsland Market? Uh, I used to, since the fall... no. Ah, perfect. Allow me. She fishes in her bag and takes out a piece of very thin paper. Ah, it looks like nothing. But it's got the route, you see, and directions for how to turn the difficult corners. If any constables notice and give you difficulty on the matter of maps, just swallow it. I've made a few of these for friends. Oh, Hogsland Market. Just likely a, likely just a corruption of Hogs Lane. But I'd keep my pet pig on a leash all the same. Hogs Lane. <laughs> Goodbye, then. It's nearly time for supper. Uh, yeah, let's change clothes before dinner. Uh, let's take, we can take off our jacket now. We'll leave the, we'll leave the thing on. That'll do. Grizz is waiting for me. Whatever census forms you have ready, it is time to take them to Mr. Pages. Uh, can we have supper instead? Now I'm famished. Oh, Mr. Pages has been expecting these all day. He's eager to see what you've made of the collection. Once I've shown you how to reach the Ministry, you can come back and, on your own and turn in others. Grizz has me gather my papers. With luck, Mr. Pages will decide to keep you on. With that, she leads me outside and down a side street that is no longer named. The way runs through streets made of old material, medieval timber, Tudor brick. A facade of Doric pilasters stolen from Ledenall Street, the doors boarded up and the windows gaping darkly overhead. It's all broken loose of its history, a folly in the hedge maze of the bazaar. Ooh. Finally we find ourselves standing in its shadow, under its walls. Before us is a low door that once, I think, belonged to a solicitor's office. Grizz takes out a key made of something other than metal and unlocks that door. Mind the pile of papers, I've already sorted them three times. Mr. Pages is very particular about the ordering of documents. Now, where has he gone? Usually he's here by this time of day. Ah, there you are, sir. We were just coming to bring you the census documents. First instalment of many, I'm sure. There is a tone in her voice, somewhere between a fondness and a nanny guiding an untutored child. Don't. Oh, ignore the mood between them or don't. Yeah, ignore the mood. 
Mr. Pages, may I present Flirty? Flirty, this is Mr. Pages. The whole Ministry of Accounting and Recounting is under Mr. Pages' direction. Uh, express gratitude for the job. Oh, thank you very much for offering me employment. The opportunities in London aren't what they used to be. Grizz assures us that they are improvocated. It is highly gratificatory that the populace of London appreciates their move. Um, make up flattering stories about London's gratitude. I invent several impromptu anecdotes about how much the people of London welcome the masters. Their help with food and fuel, invaluable. Their contributions to the architecture of the capital, incomparable. Oh, that is a help. Receive our gratitude. What have you brought us? Uh, let's do Archie's first. Ah, most integrant. It gives me a shiny penny for my trouble. It's newly minted and has a portrait on the back of someone who is certainly not the Queen. The face on the back of the coin stares at me until the hair prickles on my neck. It reminds me of a debt owed. And I don't want to remember. And my breath hitches and slows and resumes. He needs seven forms, okay. We did not expect much from Archie. Under Khan Grizz, having already revelated that he is a lightless character. What else is there? Uh, Hodget? Page offers me two pennies from a jar, bringing my stash to three. There are other coins in there, and a few things that aren't even coins. Buttons, pearls probably false, a horse head carved from ivory or bone. The quality of your information impresses us this time. Can we say that the story is finished while the lover has not returned? Another chaptering is imaginable. Do you have anything more? Uh, Rachel? Mr. Pages takes the census page eagerly and spends some time scanning it. Whatever it finds, it considers impressive enough to offer us two pennies. But it is, I think, disappointed all the same. There is something it is looking for that it cannot find. It looks through the sheets of the form in its usual way. It doesn't find much to interest it in the account of Rachel's romantic life. It is much more intrigued by her employment. She invents love stories from nothing. Uh, there are any number of novels printed in every year in London. The price of paper was recently reduced. Oh, these stories we will acquire. If they are suitable, then we will also acquire the authoress. <laughs> uh, offer to arrange an introduction for Grizz. Her current novel is being printed one chapter at a time in the magazine The Lily of London. Oh, does its story pertain to lovers? Are they disappointed and crossed in their aims? Uh, well, the story has not yet come to an end. I see. Still of a kind to be shaped. I could make sure she and Grizz are acquainted. Then Grizz could commission her to be sure the novels are suitably written. Yes, do this. Help Grizz ask Rachel Landau for writing work, okay? Do you have anything more? Uh, David's page. Mr. Page's pays. Then it puts the census page in a stack of others much like it. It weighs the stack down with the paperweight. If I look too hard at the paperweight, my eyes sting. It seems he cares for his sister more than for any other. Nonetheless, his affections are prolific. <laughs> There's some promise in that. The business of the census is done for now. Perhaps I've earned a question. Uh, why do maps need to be outlawed? Why aren't we allowed to have maps and atlases anymore? We need them more than ever. London isn't arranged where it used to be. Ah, I believe the Ministry intends to resurvey the territory. In the meantime, it wouldn't do, you know, to have people using fallacious maps. The territory of the Neath is antidisposificated towards lying still. 
What does that mean? Well, that means it moves about, obviously. I beg your pardon? I, I, uh... I suppose it must be a reference to the seismic activity. Perhaps there's a concern that future events will disturb the arrangements of London streets. And now that I think on it, in those circumstances, the existence of inaccurate maps might cause alarm. Perhaps better not to create in the population an expectation of consistent layout. That's enough of my official duties for the moment. Grizz accompanies me out again when it is time to go. She makes a couple of remarks about how useful this will be, though she stops short of asking whether I'm in debt to Horatia. I haven't forgotten, though. Pay Horatia half my back rent. I wonder how much I owe her. As we make our way back to Horatia's, Grizz asks me what I think of Mr. Page's. She tries it to make it sound like an idly curious question. Um, flatteringly commit to more work. I tell her that I found him charming and pleasant. Not at all creepy. She pauses surprise, but takes the lie at face value. Before we go back inside the house, she reminds me. We have many more people in the neighbourhood to survey for the census. You know how it's done now, so you can collect them and take them to Mr. Page's yourself. I have other duties, and I may not always be there, but Page's is... Well, well I'm certain you won't be harmed if you visit the Ministry on your own. <laughs> Decide and confess that I have a flirtatious interest in Mr. Page's. I'll be glad to pay a visit by myself. An opportunity, some might say. You're hired as a clerk, not a, a... Well, the word isn't in a lady's vocabulary. Don't go thinking you're hired for something you weren't. Mr. Pages would probably be offended and blame me for hiring you on. Archie finds me upstairs after dinner. Why well, cannot stop thinking on the Ministry of Cartography? There's something not quite right there. If you'd let me show you what I'm thinking of. Point out that I'm always interested in him. Any interest of yours is an interest of mine. Aye, well, it's a serious matter, so pay attention. Not that I mind you giving me that look. Carry on, just so you hear what I'm trying to tell you at the same time. It's a way of sorting out my thoughts. When I started, it was to think through a treatment. Uh, but it's good for all sorts, stories, schemes, things that might be true, or things that don't have to be. While he's talking, he's getting out some bits of paper written over in his own handwriting. Uh, watch closely. Assignment. Learn about creating a story. So this is um, one of the gameplay elements here. We, we, we can sort of build these narratives that could be for stories or for solving crimes. But I don't want to get too bit spoilery there, but that's what it's for. From time to time, you'll be making stories about the things you discover in the Neath. Sometimes people will ask you to bring them a story. They might want a true account, or they might want fiction. Either way, you'll come here to create the story they want. Who? This is a slot. Slots contain the elements of your story. This is a who slot. It can contain a character featured in the story. Click on it. Uh, these are all the characters' tokens you could currently put in the slot. As you meet more characters in the game, you'll gain more options. Uh, let's... It's saying to put Arch... Oh no, that's... I think it could be anyone. Let's put Harge in. Excellent. You can select the slot again to choose someone else if you'd like to do it. Otherwise, let's continue. Let's continue. Characters in the stories you crafted can be driven by motives. And these motives spur them to act. Tokens for actions and motives are represented by fragments of text rather than pictures. Assign a token to both the motive and action slots before you continue. Okay. This is a story all about how our world got flipped and turned upside down. Oh, sorry, motive, yeah. Um, Harjit hoped for love. A policeman driven by powerful lust. He had a secret affair. That seemed, I mean, that's pretty true, isn't it, really? Well done, delicious friend. Let's continue. Not every story is a single-hander, of course. Commonly, a second character will feature as a friend, an enemy, or a victim. 
uh, Mr. Pages. Oh, hang on. Uh, note that the token for the character you first chose is marked with a cross. If you assign that token to this slot, it'll vacate this one. Uh, let's put it in Mr. Pages. Sometimes they don't make sense together. More often you can mix and match based on whatever you've learned about the world. You'll find more variations as we play. Uh, Mr. Pages was afraid of Harjit. <laughs> okay. In that, slot, in that case, the slots will be locked. You can change everything else about the story, but not that piece. Okay. Finally, you can sometimes put unknown into a slot. This means you think there's another possible answer, but you need to explore the world more to find out what it is. Uh, okay, seems fine. Took unknown actions. He reacted by doing something we haven't discovered yet. The Ministerial Exposé crafted Question of Fear. You formed a theory to ask people about. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you get a message about a story completed, that lets you know the, what kind of story you built. You can now go back and ask other characters about your idea. Harjit, a policeman driven by a powerful lust, carried on a discreet and private affair with his lover, Mr. Pages. <laughs> Mr. Pages was afraid of Harjit and reacted by doing something we have yet to identify. Okay. <laughs> Alright, onward. Whenever you've done working on a story, finish a notch, you can leave the story crafting board and go and tell other characters about your idea. <laughs> and let's go and talk to Grizz about this. Let's talk to Harjit about it. You see how I'm coming at it. I'm trying to work out what Mr. Pages is about with the Ministry. It's no use asking Grizz, you've seen that. Simon, develop Archie's theory as to what Mr. Pages is up to. Mr. Pages established a Ministry rule forbidding mapping in the Neath, and then something happened, presumably, but what? I mean, this is what he's said. London is locked. Mr. Pages made laws forbidding mapping because in he it knew that the floor of the Neath would shift anyhow. The maps would become obsolete and the citizens grow frightened. It was better to allow people to think their own memories were at fault. The typical reactors London's reacted by... The typical London credulously believed its propaganda, even when it warned against using quite common... It was warned against using quite st common street names. People... I mean, they people obeyed. Pages. Desperate. Typical... Yeah, gullibly fell into line with everything that was required and never questioned whether Mr. Pages had some secret agenda. I mean... Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what he's said. That's what he's done. And I don't get a sense that people are rebelling against it or asking questions. What about if they protect London? The typical London rebelled against these commands whenever it was safe to do so, feeling Mr. Pages did not mean the city well. It seemed best to create a bit of difficulty for these newcomers who acted as lords and ministers without any right. I don't think that is what's happening. Honestly. This is the one I'm having trouble with. I mean, just because the typical Londoner believes it doesn't mean that that's what's happening, right? All right, let's let's uh, let's go down the Protect London route. What if we put resisted there? Oh yeah, we've, we've seen that, haven't we? What if the unknown Pope but pages unknowable? I mean, I think that's probably right. But people aren't obeying, are they? Because Rachel made a map and has been doing it for other people as well. Alright, let's do that. You may think Mr. Pages has some other notion of why it's acting so, but it doesn't comfort me much not knowing what that is. 
If you don't mind giving Mr. Page his old manner the stories about the people that live below, then you can go on with it. But if you'd rather another way to making your bread, I have a friend below that can take what we learn and put it about in the papers. I told him I knew someone that might be able to bring back a few secrets of the ministry. If you make up the questions you want to ask, you can investigate with anyone who might answer. Earn your pennies helping the citizens rather than those creatures in their blankets. New girl, bring Archie theories about the ministry. Okay. I mean, Professor Flirty doesn't really care about this. He just cares about flirting. Um, but yeah, let's search for the truth then. It sounds like it doesn't require upright penmanship. That makes it superior to census work right there. Hey, doing it just. And the truth has its own value. I'm glad to hear you say so. That's no easier thing, fighting the doubts on my own. With Horatia telling me I've got the fidgets and Grizz saying I should be quiet and trust the robe-wearing masters, I should let you get your sleep. You should feel free to come and talk with me any time. My own room's not big enough to turn about in, of course. Ah, but you can find me in the parlour. <laughs> Accept and plan to seduce Archie. I don't know. It might be entertaining to try to fit in yours. Hey, you say that, but we might as well play it, play act at being eels in a jar. When I came here, Horatia had little more than a cupboard free for new lodgers. But you've got more or less your own palace. Uh huh. Uh, let's review the day in my journal because I think we're going to end it here for today. Um, so goals, we've, we've just to recap, we've got bring Archie theories about the ministry, we've got to pay Horatia half my rent, five pennies, so we have six, so we can do that. Help Grizz ask Rachel Landale for work. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go down there. Just be, I'm just saying that because I know from reading the reviews that you don't get time to do everything. Um, so I think I'm going to try and break down the truth about the ministry. Obviously, I can pay Horatia back. Um, we, we might find Harjit, his lost beloved. And we'll probably end up doing this anyway in the course of the game, so that's fine. New acquaintances. We are David. Nothing really interesting there. What does it say about Mr. Pages, Master of the Bazaar? I want to win its heart, but we haven't even flirted much yet. Oh, our only observation, it is very tall. Phoebe was the uh, maid, wasn't she? And Rachel. Nothing, nothing really illuminating there, I don't think. This is where our stories goes. Oh, because we made two versions of it. Okay, fine. Um, but there we go. So we're going to leave it there for today. Uh, when we come back, we'll pick up on uh, the next day. But I presume it's going to be 261 days since the fall. Um, but I'm just going to say I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun for me, uh, you know, acting out, doing the voices, and uh, trying to give it a bit of uh, character. And I hope you appreciate that. If you do, then please do hit the thumbs up button on the video. That would be very much appreciated. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the game, this playthrough. Um, thoughts on replaying after this, because... Uh, a single run of this may only be sort of three or four episodes long um, so, I, so I do think I'll, I'll replay it at least once with a very different character and see how that goes and maybe pursue one of these different paths or other paths that we're yet to sort of get a, an inkling of um, but yeah just let me know your thoughts it's always good to get feedback I, I do look forward to the comments and lastly if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel it would be amazing if you could do so um, so thanks very much once again and I hope to see you next time for more Mask of the Rose Bye for now.